It's me, Julian Greystoke, filming again at night, because it's when I have time to film. We're just gonna have to get over it. Today I'm wearing my labyrinth shirt. Not really for any particular reason, I just felt like wearing it. We are going to be talking about a book called The Book of a Thousand Days, which I read probably more than a thousand days ago. It feels like it, that's for sure. Let's use my laptop candy to read the synopsis and remind myself what I'm talking about, shall we? When Dashti, a maid, and Lady Saren, her mistress, are shut in a tower for seven years because of Saren's refusal to marry a man she despises, the two prepare for a very long and dark imprisonment. As food runs low and the days go from broiling hot to freezing cold, it is all Dashti can do to keep them fed and comfortable. With the arrival outside the tower of Saren's two suitors, one welcome, the other decidedly less so, the girls are confronted with both the hope and great danger. And Dashti must make the desperate choices of a girl whose life is worth more than she knows. So that's a fairly short and sort of mysterious synopsis. I like it. Hey guys, this is the world's fastest reminder that you can support me on Patreon and see all kinds of exclusive videos like these ones. Now back to your regularly scheduled program. Now let's read my notes and see if I can understand what I thought about this book. I did give it four stars on Goodreads, so apparently I liked it. Right away I say that I liked the characters, and that's gonna be really important. I do still have some memory of them, which, for the amount of time that's passed since I read this book, is pretty impressive. One thing that I did notice about Dashti is that she is a pretty well-rounded character to me. She made a lot of bad choices and mistakes, and that could frustrate some readers, but I find that as long as those bad choices are in character, like I know the character well enough to know what choices they would make, then I don't mind if they make bad or frustrating choices. I'd rather have a round character than one who never makes any mistakes. I did, however, want to give Dashti a little bap on the back of the head, at frequent intervals. I will say that her mistress, Saren, did seem to have potentially some type of mental illness, and I wasn't sure exactly what it was, but I also wasn't sure how I felt about it as representation. If anybody who has a better handle on this reads this book, let me know if you think that that is true and if you think it's well done. I really enjoyed the romantic interest for Dashti. He was both a kick-ass warrior king and a gentle cinnamon roll, and I am here for those types of characters. I will say that while Dashti makes a lot of mistakes and bad choices, she also seems to have some kind of luck on her side, or plot on her side. Maybe the author just likes her a lot. Things tend to work out for her, even when she does make those mistakes and bad choices. Nigel and his crazy tail are here again. Even things that seem like they're going to go badly for Dashti end up turning out for the best. The magic in this book was interesting. This isn't the first book I have read with like singing and music based magic, but I still liked what they were doing with it. It was, as I recall, a fairly subtle magic, and I'm on board with that. I do like to understand your magic, but I also like it to be limited and different if you can. In fact, I did mention that I wish the magic had more rules, so I do want to understand your magic. I wrote, it seems to come from the gods, but then it seems the gods might not be real. I could do with a bit more information. I will say that this book hinges on a misunderstanding slash liar plot. So if those kinds of plots bother you, this book will probably not be for you. It really depends with me whether I like that or not. It is overdone, but it mustn't have bothered me too much in this book because I still gave it the four stars, but it was a pretty heavy theme. Something else that was a little bit weird is that Dashti seems to have some kind of odd skin pigmentation, and I wasn't sure what was going on with it or what the author was doing with it. It doesn't seem to matter at all, so I was curious why she has it. Is it just for like the representation for people who have interesting, unusual skin pigmentation, or is there more that we're supposed to be getting out of it? Does it tie back to the original story because it is based on a fairy tale, or what? And finally, I do have that the ending was a little bit disappointing. Dashti was getting all set up to defeat her enemy using her brains rather than brawn, and you guys know I am here for that too. Pretty much any time that a character wants to defeat their enemy with craftiness, I'm down for it. But then the plan turned out to be not that crafty at all, and really kind of straightforward and disappointing. It was very eh 
and I was expecting a lot more. I know I have a lot of critiques for this book, but I know that I did enjoy it. Again, I gave it the four stars, and I do remember the characters and the plot, even though it's been months since I read this book. So that means that it definitely stuck with me, and often I can use that as a metric of whether I liked a book or not. I will say the thing that stuck with me the least is the villain, which probably meant he was the least interesting character of all. I do seem to remember him being the fairly standard rapey evil guy, so if you're not into that, maybe also give this book a pass. It is based on a fairy tale, so that might be a little bit of where that comes from, but he wasn't given as much nuance as the other characters. And like I said, I also remember being frustrated with the characters on a fairly regular basis, so if you're not into that, if you're not into characters who are in character but are frustrating while they do it, again, you might want to give this one a pass. I could see this book going really either way for most people, so just know what your likes and dislikes are going into this book, and I think you'll be fine. But what did you think? Did you read Book of a Thousand Days? What did you think about it? Comment below, let me know. Have you read any other Shannon Hale books? What did you think of them? Does she have any other ones that I should read next? If you liked what you saw here, there's a bunch more book reviews on this channel, all arranged in a handy playlist for you to binge to your heart's content. And if you want to support what you saw here monetarily, I have a Patreon for that where as little as a dollar a month gets you access to all kinds of exclusive content. All my social media is in the doobly-doo for ease of your clicking. I post new videos Mondays and Fridays. And Nigel and I will see you again next time with whatever it is we happen to be doing next time. Bye! Hello my lovelies, tis time again for our shout-outs. We are shouting out Lennox, Amanda, Irene, Jenny, Kim, Lisa, Sabby Panda, Sam, Sarah, Savvy, and Scribbling Cat. Thanks again, you all, for all of your awesome help. You guys are the best.